This video may contain copyrighted material used for educational, transformative, or commentary purposes, constituting fair use under Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Law. And it's also my... Hey now, how y'all doing? It's Lil Pullet, and I'm back to talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 8, Episode 2, Mar Tell It All, or should I say Clown Tell It All interview. Um, I'm not going to talk about the whole episode, just a couple of things from the episode that I like. First of all, they showed the podcast, I'm sorry, not the podcast, the tour that Mel was on, that Sassy went and Sassy showed us on live. So, um, <clears throat> I see, um, Carlos questioning Sonny, saying that, uh, Destiny gave Sonny all this information, and then Destiny, uh, claimed that Sonny would tell her to leave Moses and X, Y, and Z, and the whole time she was plotting on Moses or whatever, and I just say, haha, I don't. I don't really care. Honestly, I don't care. And I also don't believe that uh, Destiny was telling Sonny everything. Because now, all of a sudden, she tells everything. All, the whole reason that most people had a problem with her to begin with is because she doesn't tell anything. But now, she told the producer everything. So, she told the producer all of this stuff. Then why didn't we ever see a storyline? If Sonny was the producer that she gave all this information to, why didn't we ever see a storyline about it? Hmm, i wait. Yeah, thought so. So Sunny is shocked that, you know, she's getting the booze and everything when she came out. And she talks about how different it is as being behind the camera as a producer versus being on the camera. And she just thought that, you know, nobody could have prepared her for all the booze and I guess the questions. Carlos asks how they met and uh he said, I seen her at an event, but uh a friend of mine and uh that how I met her. Oh my goodness, Sonny. Is he Nesto 2.0? What in the world? What is wrong with you? Why are y'all marrying men that have mush mouths? How do you have conversations with people like that? How? I'm sorry. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. That would drive me crazy. I'll probably start attacking him. If not with my hands, definitely my mouth. I, I can't deal with that. Like, I don't care how cute you are. Now, he is cute. I'm looking at him right here. He is cute. I'm sorry. That uh, that uh, that guy with Trisha, I don't think he's cute. He looked like... um. The the guy from the OJ's, uh, Levert and them father. I don't I don't consider him cute. I don't I don't see that. I mean he alright. Closer to the not cute side than anything in my opinion. But um Moses, yeah, Moses is cute. Now if he is a mush mouth but he's still, you know, making million dollar deals, then I guess I can understand. I don't know, it's not for me, but I mean that's because I grew up in a house where I got popped in the mouth if I talk dumb, you know. So when I hear other people do it, I want to pop them in the mouth too. Or in the mouth. <laughs> Crowd started going crazy when he said January 3rd and January 12th. But why y'all care? That's what I want to know. Why y'all care? Why y'all care? What difference do it make? What difference do it make? What do I got to do with y'all? Why y'all care? <laughs> but here's my question. If the last time you saw somebody you was dating in January and then you claim they sent you money in August, but you won't, the last time you saw them was January. Now, I ain't going to lie, I've been in a whole lot of long distance relationships when I was younger. A whole lot. Way before the internet and all that stuff because I, you know, moved around my whole life. So, um, I've been in a whole lot of long distance relationships. And long distance relationships, they do kind of just, you just kind of stop talking. It don't have to be no official or whatever. I mean, if you feel like got to be official, then you might want to contact that mug if he not contacting you. But otherwise, you kind of just 
float off. You just kind of like stop talking and then you just, you know, you live in your own perspective cities and you just go on with your life. That's kind of how it happens. Now, I would think that if I wasn't really talking to a guy and, you know, like it's a long distance relationship and we not really, you know, flowing like that, I probably think that he is talking to somebody else. But if we are strong and we talking and seeing each other, I mean, you don't have to see each other all the time, but you know what I'm saying? If y'all have y'all schedule, then yeah, like I'm going to feel some kind of way if you're not, you know, responding and things like that. But it doesn't seem like it was like that. And I don't care if it was or not. Sonny don't owe her nothing. I don't care what nobody say. Sonny don't owe her nothing. Until I see evidence that her, Sonny, and Destiny were really friends, then I would feel like she owes her something. But I don't understand how now all of a sudden Destiny then told Sonny all of this information and Sonny used it when Destiny ain't been telling no information. Please make it make sense. I definitely love when Carlos asked what was in Destiny doing or whatever. And he said she wasn't being consistent and being the woman that he wanted her to be. Whatever. I don't care. And then Mel said, what woman is that? And then he said, this woman right here. See, I ain't mad at that. that. That's what I'm talking about. This woman right here. Now, whether it lasts or not, I don't know. I really don't know. But it's not for me to say. It's not for me to judge. I don't really care either way. They already married. Let them do what they do. If he turned out not to be a great guy or Sonny turns out not to be a great person, that's on them. That's that's their life. But all I know is what I have seen Dustiny do all this time on these social media streets and on the show. And I don't like her. And Sonny, you right. And at the end of the day, you're single until you're married. Hmm. And also, I think it's funny that most of the people that have something to say are not married. <laughs> Ain't no, not even people, women. Ain't no man even ask you to marry them. But you got all this mouth to say about this, this, and that. Some shit that you ain't never experienced and probably never will. <laughs> Shut up. Sonny said, even when she started dating Mo Moses, he already has several women. And Mel looks so shocked. And I don't get that because that is how men operate, especially black men. When you meet these guys in the store, online or wherever, in the parking lot, and they say they single, you think they ain't still effing somebody? They got plenty of women that they still messing with, still taking out, still doing it. Just because they met you, they like didn't just stop. They're not cutting those women off. That's the problem with women. When women meet a man in the store and they give out the number, they talk to him on the phone a couple of times, they start cutting people off. Don't even know if it's going to be a relationship. Don't even know nothing. No, you keep talking to those people. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. You're single. And that's another thing. As black people, we don't know how to date. We don't go out and date different people. We don't even know how to do it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's why everybody looking all shot. That's what single men do. That's exactly what single men do. They have a whole stable of women all the time until they decide that they want to cut them off. But it's never really that they're cut off like in between like relationships. They always got some woman there. It's always somebody there. They might be pick me's, but they still there. And like Sonny said, you was always the side chick. You was never the main chick. Which is the problem. And then people that be side chicks, they just continue to do it. Relationship to relationship. Side hen, side chick, whatever you want to call them. Depending on the age. But uh, I love that Sonny said, that's just too bad if you don't like it. And I love that she said it to the crowd. Now, I know that my girl's in the crowd. But whoever was in the crowd booing her, that was for you. Whoever was talking, that was for you. Sonny brought that right back to you. Like she said, that's just too bad. And I love that. I love a woman who ain't taking no mess from nobody. Ain't letting nobody say whatever or do whatever without saying something back. That's why I like her too. When Marceau confronted Clown Tell about doing an interview with uh, Tasha K, with her clown ass, um, he uh, just the way he answered it, no, because uh, like it was so choppy, just the way he was saying it. Uh, don't make it seem like I'm an abuser. You gotta hurry up and tell everybody. Mel didn't make it seem like shit. 
the police made it seem like shit. If Mel gave them the evidence and the evidence doesn't add up to what she thinks it is, then there's no case. Why are y'all acting like Mel is the police or the district attorney's office? She does not make any rules. She's not a legislator. She she didn't run for anything in Alabama. She doesn't decide what the laws are when it comes to revenge pee. Why is she why do you expect her to come trying to clean up your mess? It seemed like y'all are all delusional. All of y'all. Delusional. Delulu. God, I'm going to tell you, you're always fucking lying. You ain't been waved no white flag. Any white flag you raised, it was in public, but behind closed door, you were still acting a fool. You are always doing that. You are such a damn narc. You like every damn narc I ever met. Y'all all follow the same exact script. You do the same exact mess. And then you sit up here acting like you didn't do nothing. That's why we can't stand your ass. The quieter you are. You ain't never been quiet. And even if you do get quiet, you send your side chick in to do whatever the hell you need her to do. Just like the bullies in school. When they get in trouble, when the principal get them in trouble, then they go get their friends to attack you. That's exactly what you did. The same thing you did to make the melamides become creative to begin with. Fuck out of here. Us nice guys. I cannot stand when a damn man calls himself a nice guy. Every single time he turns out not to be a nice guy. Marceau, the snots are a group of deplorables. And and all y'all mammies and they 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 mammies and they're mammies. How about that? And not to mention your wives are mammies. If my face was that ashy and my head was that bumpy and my beard was that nappy honey i wouldn't even show up on no damn reality show there ain't no way i would have a head looking like that with all them bumps big knots and bumps all over it cone pointing in the middle face so ashy like you need seventh avenue so bad and that nappy ass beard that shit is nappy than a mug mm. uh, marceau and uh Maurice claimed they've been through the same thing, but they chose not to go through divorce while they sat around blaming Mel and us. Y'all ain't never been through the same thing, just like uh, Clown Tail said. And we don't have nothing to do with what happened with y'all relationships and the things that y'all go through, including Martel. Martel is his own biggest enemy. Oh, ugly ass. Talking about he can't continue to get stabbed in his back. No, you're the stabber, ninja. You're the stabber. Dusty ass clown. Clown tail, it's been four years and it's just the same old stuff over and over and over again since your divorce. Actually, before your divorce, it's the same stuff. Everybody trying to tell you to stop. You're going to regret it later. Then you get some karma and then you try to come back at Mel and act like what you did first has nothing to do with anything. This is what you do over and over and over again. You pretend to take accountability. Then you can't take it if somebody brings it up again. And then you start attacking her again, playing the victim. This is what you do. It's called Groundhog Day, honey. It's called Groundhog's Day. I'm not messing with that Stormy and Kiki mess because Stormy trying to throw Kiki under the bus acting like that she wasn't down with it. She wasn't down with the blogger that she ain't giving the blogger five hundred dollars here and there and doing all the stuff that she doing when she's c communicating with the same blogger. So I'm not trying to hear that Stormy. You ain't nothing but a damn hypocrite and you trying to get off the bus right now. And I hope you see that Kiki. I hope you see that. I hope you stopped uh, saying that Stormy is so great and all of this stuff because she's not. And I got a problem with I heard that you said something about taping with Ariane Curry. Really, Kiki? That's how we doing it? That's not cool. Mm -mm, that's not cool. I can't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You didn't cross the line, but I didn't hear you say it. But I heard that you said some shit like that. I don't like that, Kiki. That's crossing the line. Oh my goodness, here we go again. This confessional look, Stormy, you look a hot ass mess with this blonde She-Ra from He-Man wig on and that outfit look like a BDSM outfit like you dressed as She-Ra. It looks terrible on you because of your um, your features. Your features are very uh, Afrocentric and it looks crazy with that wig. Like... 
that looks crazy. And I ain't talking about the color, even though I am at the same time. It's the color and the style of the hair on her with the, them big ass lips and that nose. Like, it looks crazy. It looks like um, a bad costume. A very bad costume. Kimmy talking about she hoping Tisha could stay cool because she's sure she feels away. Sonny will whoop her ass. How about that? How about that? How about nobody scared of Tisha? Ain't that the same person that got water flicked on her and she sat there and drowned? Can we please? Sonny ain't worried about no damn Tisha. So let her get piped up. Let her get crunk or whatever so Sonny can pour some water on her ass and simmer her ass down. I'm just really confused as how you live in the same town with your sister-in-law and um, their brothers are best friends. And you live in a tiny ass town, country ass town, and you haven't seen each other in a whole year. Y'all supposed to be so tight. How? So y'all only see each other when y'all film to gang up on Mel, basically. That's what you're saying. Mm. Tisha, ugh, you look a mess in that confession when you said, what? And the nostrils all flaring. Tisha didn't, uh, Kimmy didn't tell me Sonny was going to be here. What? That was so fake. That was so fake, Tisha. You know, you're one of those people that have tails. Your nostrils kind of flare when you lie. And also, when you do your high voice, you be lying. Mm-hmm. You be lying. You be lying. You be lying. No, let me stop. <laughs> so, Kimmy did thank Sunny for her being there for her, along with the team that Sunny worked with. I guess the production company or whatever that they work with for being there for her when she was going through her battle. I like that. I like that, Kimmy. I think it's so funny that they saying hide your husband and all of this stuff when Kimmy the one that's the side chick. And Tisha, your husband is the one that have all the rumors about cheating. I mean, the audacity is just the audacity for me. I ain't never seen y'all sit down and say none of this stuff to Martell. I ain't even never hear y'all even say anything about AC. Like, none of that. I mean, unless they edit it out, I'm, I'm going to give you that. They could have edited it out. But even at the table, I'm going I'm to stop. But I don't hear nobody ever commenting on all the messed up things that Martell has done. They might say things here and there, but I don't hear people sitting around. I hear them still trying to point the finger at Mel some kind of way, just like Martell and Maurice just did. That's what y'all do. That's what y'all do. But it's when it's somebody else, then y'all got all the empathy in the damn world. But yet y'all on Mel's show. Please make it make sense. And Tisha talking about welcome to our world. You get everything that you put out. You and Kimmy, your husbands, you guys receive everything that you put out. I know Tisha didn't say no professional environment when Black got a boom boom room and her husband was supposed to be getting the snow off of his thing by one of the makeup artists getting sniffed off his thing by one of the makeup artists at a professional place in the boom boom room. I know you didn't say nothing about no professional. And Kimmy, your husband is there too. So I know you're not talking. And y'all wonder why we don't like y'all? That's why we don't like you. Okay, well, Sonny was responding to them. Like, that's cool and everything. But I don't believe in no such thing as you can't help who you fall in love with. I don't believe in that because love is a choice. It's an action. It's a choice. You know, it's a verb. Put it that way. And... You choose, you do choose who you fall in love with. You don't just walk up to people, wake up and walk, get dressed and walk outside and say, I love you. You know, like you do choose, like you cultivate a relationship, you give out your phone number. That's choosing. You know what I'm saying? Now, whether it falls like that or not, but by participating in a relationship, that's choosing. Like, stop. I hate when people do that because it's, it's as if we don't have control over our emotions. We have control over every single emotion. Every single emotion. It's about how you respond. The response is the emotion. So you have control over that. There's no such thing as you can't help who you fall in love with. This ain't no damn uh, TV show, no romantic comedy. Yes, the F you can. Like, women got to know we have all the control over our emotions. All of it. Sunny says to Tisha, after Tisha asks her when did they break up or how did they break up or something like that. Um... 
that um, she didn't think Destiny was relevant at the time because he was dating other women. And then Tisha says, why wouldn't she be relevant? She just said why. Because he was dating other women. So why are you confronting her if he was dating other women? That's basically like, that's what she's saying. If Destiny was so relevant, then why was he with other women? Girl. Somewhere in your soul, somewhere in your tummy, it was telling you y'all had a relationship. Kimmy, hello, Kyra. Kyra, this is Kimmy. Okay? That's what I'm going to say about that. That face that Tisha making, I'm going to say that about you too. Because you was with Kyra calling Kimmy a side chick. Hmm. Got a good memory. Hmm. Kimmy, well, we was blindsided. Who are y'all? There, she's not your friend either. Why shouldn't you be blindsided? Like, what are you talking about? And then Tisha, you didn't seem like the trifling type of female. Again, Tisha, you were with Kyra calling Kimmy a side chick. At least you didn't, I'm going to say, it didn't come out your mouth, but you didn't uh, say no, she wasn't. Never. Never. Have you said Kimmy isn't a side hen? Never, Tisha. You haven't never said that. So they brought up um, Sunny Karen about Destiny and she admitted that she does. And she said, I've done things for her. I paid things for her. And then Tisha, can we not talk about money? I feel like that's a jab. Why is it that Destiny can say whatever she wants about everybody like she did with Mel? Talked all that stuff about Mel, calling her not a good friend. But when Mel would bring up the things that she done for her to say that she is a good friend, Mel is wrong, but not Destiny. When she's proven that Destiny is wrong. It's the same thing. When it comes to Destiny, she can just say and do whatever she wants. And when somebody can jab her ass back, then they're wrong for coming back at her. If you don't cut it out, same thing with Martel. He can say everything he wants. Mel come back, then Mel is mad. Mel responds, she's wrong for responding back to him. If y'all don't sit y'all asses down. And Tisha and Cammy continuously making up excuses for uh, Destiny's um, always running her mouth, lying on people, making up stories. And then when somebody come back and say something back, it's like, oh, well, you know, she got to feel away. Well, Sonny feel away, too. Mel feel away, too, Tisha, when you brought that up. Because Destiny kept telling everybody that Mel was not a good friend, but Mel was paying her bills. Okay. Sonny said it was their destiny and she hit it on the nose. <laughs> That was a good jab. Good jab, Sonny. Well, Mel blessed Kiki on her journey. I ain't really got too much to say about that because I've already said it. Mel got a right to feel however she feel. But I feel like it should be the same towards the snots, especially Tisha and Kimmy. I'm sorry. They deserve the same thing. They've done far more than Kiki has ever done personally to Mel. Like Personally, they've done far more. But I digress That's my opinion That's how I feel about it And it ain't even just my opinion It's facts We've seen it over the years It's been eight damn seasons So I'm not going to sit up here and pretend That it's just my opinion It is what it is It's facts It's facts 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 But anyway I don't know if this means Kiki Won't be back I, I really don't know But once I heard that stuff about the Ar the Ariane stuff, honey, that she would film with Ariane, yeah, I ain't, mm -mm, I ain't trying to hear that. I ain't trying to hear that. But anyway, y'all, tell me what y'all think about it. Go off in the comments and let me know what you think about everything, how you feel about the situation. All opinions are welcome. Um, I just want to say this too. I probably I'm gonna put this at the beginning of my video. I want to say this, say something to everybody. But thank you guys for taking the time to listen to my video. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one, gang, gang. Peace. I'd like to kiss you, but I just washed my hair. Bye.